definitely on the limit now, I would say. It's often said no plan survives first contact and that is going to be very much the case here today. We're at Snaefell, the highest point on the island. We've got a storm force rolling in tonight. Winds of 50 to 60 miles per hour. We've got heavy rain due and possibly thunder and lightning. Thought that's going to be an excellent test for the Hilleberg Solo. However, when I initially made this plan to camp tonight, it was based on the weather from the last few days. Beautiful inversions, lovely sunsets, excellent views from Snaefell Mountain. But that's not going to be the case tonight. We're not going to be perturbed by that. There's something special about camping in adverse weather. The sound of the wind on the tent, the rain, you know, we're well equipped. I've got all the gear. However, I've not been camping in a while, so let's hope I can still do it. With it being close to Halloween, on the way here, I went down to the ancient capital of the Isle of Man, Castletown, and I checked out a few, let's say, spooky historical areas involving witchcraft, vampire graves, public executions, and a ghostly castle. Talk about them a bit later. That can be a bit of tent talk once we're established. As you can see, conditions, <laughs> I don't think they're going to improve, but they are definitely going to get worse. Problem with this weather is you never really know whether you're at the summit or not. 2036 feet high this snow fell, so we'll press on. Last time I came up here, it was in the snow. A bit more of that this winter too. This is definitely way more windy than it was forecast. I've got a wind anometer. I'll check it out shortly, but the, the winds aren't supposed to get heavy until like another three or four hours. Well, this is insane. Be a good test for the Hilleberg. <laughs> Tried to pitch behind me, but fortunately the ground it's like rock that deep, so I can't get a solid pitch. So I'm gonna go lower and try and find somewhere I can pitch. This is absolutely horrific. Just check the wind, 65 miles an hour up here. That's what it's all about. Let's go find somewhere. Delta pegs now, but let's get inside and uh, hunker down a bit because it is pretty horrific out here. Really cool bit of kit actually I just used for the first time. Look, flex tail, something or other. Bought it with my own money, not sponsored, but essentially pumps up your sleeping mat and it's also a hanging lantern light so it's a uh, dual purpose which i'm a big fan of i'll go through my sleep system in a bit but i just want to get settled okay you lovely people quick tent tour because i know you love all this and i do too so we just got a 3ful folding mat at the bottom climate static v insulated mat so it keeps you warm psychology pillow down sleeping bag warm gear wise usual sort of fleece i'm all about layering 
down boots, although it's not that cold at the moment to be honest. British Army thermals, uh, sock buff. Uh, then in the kitchen side, what we got here? Uh, jet boil mini mo. Obviously, I've got a jet boil skillet which is designed for the mini mo. It's got pot support. We're having burgers later. I've got a real termite meal which are bloody expensive. And then there's some cookies. That's about it. In the bomb shelter. Bring you back when we get some food on. Loving this. Time to cook the burgers, but first I want to level the pan, so I've cut the little spirit level app on the iPhone. Yes, nice and straight. Well, let's fire it up. Things to consider when cooking inside a tent. Make sure you've got adequate ventilation. Nobody wants to get carbon monoxide poisoning, I'll tell you that now. So anyway, burgers are on, the skillet's going well. And obviously, <laughs> we don't want to set a tent on fire. That wouldn't go down well. Well, as I was walking past before, the uh, antennas up here on Snaefell, it reminded me of a story that a guy at work told me. Basically, back in 2004, and this new UFO people will love this, there was reports of an unidentified aircraft that had hit one of them, and it was seen smoking down the valley off towards Ramsey. Uh, all the emergency services were called and it never found anything. It's a popular belief that it was some sort of UFO. Now UFOs, to be fair, I'm not really up on it all. There's some great YouTube channels and it's not something I follow overly much to be honest, but it can quite often be like test military aircraft. It's not always like the aliens and stuff. Some cracking stories, some test aircrafts flying between here and Scotland. In like the 60s and 70s. Let's hope nothing like that happens tonight, eh? <laughs> they might not look like much, but just what you need after a bit of a stomp up the hill. Just check the wind outside. Currently 60 mile an hour, gusts of 60, sitting around about 40, and then it just picks up. But the bomb shelter is pretty good. I'll go out and check all the guy lines shortly as well, now that I've uh, bedded it in a bit and the winds have picked up. I would not be up here on my nature height cloud up too, I tell you that much. Thing would have blown off the side of the mountain by now. Right, I'll come back to you with a few spooky stories shortly. Cheers guys. Let's go out. The gusts are getting more and more frequent. We're rocking around a bit, but pretty solid. Weirdly, I've just checked the weather forecast again, and uh, the winds aren't really supposed to be that strong as they are right now until one o'clock in the morning, and it's nine o'clock now. So yeah, <laughs> it's gonna get exciting. It's a shame I couldn't get right on the summit, but the ground was far too hard. It doesn't matter how good your tent is. If you can't get your pegs in the ground, you basically got a kite. Come back to you guys, some of the spooky locations I went to today. This place is steeped in history. I'm in the sleep bag now, guys. And as you can see, the wind has definitely picked up. <laughs> it all adds to the excitement. So anyway, I promise you guys, I'll show you some of the sites I went to before. A little bit of history behind them. So let's start, shall we? Right, we're going to Castletown, which is the ancient capital of the Isle of Man, which I've already mentioned. And in Castletown Square, near to the castle, and I'll talk about the castle shortly. They burned some people to death because they thought they were witches. You've seen the monument in the town square. I was there today, let's have a look. On one side is a wooden plaque that states the fate of a local woman who was accused, along with her son, of riding broomsticks in a field, trying to get the crops to grow. So they were both held prisoners in the castle, Castle Russian, and on the last days, they were dressed in white gowns and taken by cart to Peel, where they were put on display as a caution to would-be witches. Afterwards, they were taken back to the square, exactly where I was, in the middle where the monument was, and they were executed by fire, burned to death, essentially. That's pretty savage. So sticking with Castletown then, the actual castle, Castle Russian, which dates back to 1200. Its current design is about 1344, so they say. Apparently, it's, it was used as a both prison and an execution area. 
whatever you want to call that. There's no surprise, there's some ghostly stories to this area. So inside, they're said to have three ghosts, one of which is the white lady who's quite often seen uh, at the top of the castle, one called Rose and the woman in black. There's also a mysterious underground room where there's a male ghost who's been seen lingering. Uh, now there is a ghost walk around this castle, which I'd love to do at Malou Churchyard, which is on a famous motorcycle racing course, not the TT, the Balloon circuit. Essentially, it's the grave of someone called Matthew Hassel, who seemed like an ordinary Manxman until the day that he died and loved ones gathered at his wake. And uh, it was there that he apparently sat straight up and frightened everyone present. He was screaming or something. So ruthlessly, they declared him a vampire. It was decided. And they stuck a stake straight through his heart and uh, his wife was never allowed to be buried there. Uh, and that's why there's chains around his grave. I don't know what the chains are supposed to do, but maybe they're made of garlic or something, who knows? But that is definitely one. I mean, Google these, they, they're all there. There's plenty of uh, ghostly areas. You might think this is a bit crazy talking about this in a tent on your own on a mountain where I'm definitely the only person, but hey, I love it all, I love all this. Now moving on to Hango Hill, which is right by the coast in Castletown. Basically this was a place of execution until around about the 17th century. Yeah, various executions have been documented there, including two guys from Malou, a guy called William Carouche and a guy called Robert Callow. Uh, and he, uh, they basically got accused of murdering somebody, so they were hanged there. But the most famous one is a guy called Ilium Doan, or William Christian, in 1663 for his part in the Banks Uprising against the Derby family. Not sure what that means, but Google it. Well, there you go, guys. A few little uh, spooky areas as it's close to Halloween. Love all that stuff. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bed down and uh, if it gets worse, I'll check in with you guys. Uh, see what it's like when the rain comes on. Rain's on. It's getting quite heavy now. Said there was going to be a weather front. It has arrived. It is kicking off out there. The winds are really strong. The inner's getting battered around, but I'm fairly confident the outer's not even moving much, to be honest. Don't know how much sleep I'm going to get in. I'm like a kid at Christmas. This is what camping is all about for me. Being out in the elements, when you're in your own little secure little hiding place. Right, I'll bring you back in the morning, providing I'm not halfway to Scotland. We'll have to go outside and check the guy lines. We're taking on a bit of water here. I don't know where from. Right, wish me luck. Fuck me. out there as you can see we're pretty bad tents holding up pretty well we are getting a little bit of water ingress above the vent but I think it's driving prevailing winds through the uh, top flap but yeah it's 2 a.m. I'm happy with the delta pegs that was emotional soaking What's happened is the wind direction is no longer coming at the tent, it's coming sideways on. And as you can see, we're taking a bit of a hammer and now. It's probably the first time I've been uh, a little bit worried about the structure of the tent. As in we might break something. 
Well, I'm gonna get my head down. Nice one. Good morning, everybody. That was absolutely relentless. Relentless. Have to check the tent out, but from what I can see, looks okay. Wow, that was insane. All night it was ripping. I'm gonna make an attempt to try and uh, make the tent up. I've tried to film it, but as you can see, it's not conducive to uh, a tripod, but we'll give it a go. Cheers, guys. Back in the van now guys, what an adventure. I'm still beaming, smile to smile. Normally I like to get by the sea with all the nice sunrises, sunsets, but that was epic. Especially knowing I was in really good gear, built for this sort of conditions, especially with those Delta 10 pegs, that was going nowhere. Got a little bit worried in the middle of the night because the winds really picked up and changed direction, but was not a bother. She stayed absolutely rock solid. Quite a lot of condensation inside, but I did have it battened fully down and all the vents closed because it was just pouring in otherwise. Guys, I'll leave you there. That was an enjoyable camp for me. If you're thinking of wild camping, don't do something like this for your first camp. Build some experience up, get the right gear. Up until now, the tents I've got, I would not have gone up there with. So, right, better get back to it. Dad life awaits. Cheers, guys. Have a great week.